they're asking about the new clips on the Nego album. Yeah, and yeah. Kez I mean, nine twenty nine says, "I seen Rosenberg. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> what up to everybody out there? What did you think about the new clip song? We can go in there. We could talk about the Nego album because everybody's talking about the um, the resurgence of clips on that album." Oh, is that, is that what the chat is? Like yeah, that. that's what people are talking about. So I guess we can start there because we're going to talk about the Mulatto album or Big Lotto. I'm sorry. I'm still calling her by her previous rap name. But we're going to talk about the Big Lotto album, which I thought was impressive. So I want to get to the Nego first. Um, I thought I was I, I was impressed with it, you know. I was wondering to see, quite frankly, how it's going to mesh, because I think for those of us that are big fans of theirs, um, we know, you know, Malice has been like no Malice for some time now. Mm -hmm. He's dedicated, you know, a lot of his life to serving the Lord, which is more than an admirable thing to do, especially coming from the lifestyle that he was living. And and that, and that happens oftentimes, you know what I'm saying, for mm -hmm. guys that have seen some of the things that he's seen and done some of the things that he's done, quite frankly. So kudos to him. I've always been uh, curious to see how it was going to play if they were to get back together. This was very, very seamless to me. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like a thing or any sort of separation. I mean, the only noticeable thing is that there's like uh, no cursing really going on. You know, this is what I was going to say. Um, I think that on compilation albums, it's very difficult for us to even do reviews on compilation albums, um, you know, because it's just so much going on. But I know, like, when we were coming up with the Kluke albums or with the, the Flex albums, with so many different people on there, you're expecting home runs, right? right. And I feel like this clip song, it's not a bad song at all. It sounds more like an album song than, you know somewhat of a home run. Now, again, Pusha T's dropping an album, like, I think next week or in the next two weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Hear Me Clearly sounds to that level, right? This song sounds more, it's chilled, it's cool, it's good to hear the brothers back together. But, you know, it was nothing special. But the moment was special, if that makes yeah. any sense. No, no, I, th I think you're right. I'm, I'm even going to go a step further. I think the moment was special, and not to say that they both weren't dope, yeah. but if you really follow them and you follow their catalog, I don't even think this would have made their last two albums that they did together. This wouldn't have made Hell Half No Fury or Till the Casket Drops, would it have? No, I don't think so. You know, so it's not even to their album level making material. Yeah. Which brings to what I told you the other day, what I thought about them as a duo. I was like, oh, well, they're my third favorite duo ever personally after Outkast and Mob Deep and the clips. You For remember me, what Outkast got on that uh, DJ drama and did like what the artist storytelling for? Mm -hmm. And everybody was going crazy over it and stuff. And it's like, for me, it was like, uh. It was good. It, yeah, it's not the level that made me a fan of theirs. So, you know what I mean? I, I think one of the best records that... Because Cass has always done great with soundtrack stuff. I think High Schooling was crazy. What was that off of? The Light It Up soundtrack? One of them soundtracks back then? Yeah. That Everlasting. song was crazy. Everlasting um, off the Nothing to Lose soundtrack. Everlasting. Benz or Bima. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right. And even when they put Funkin' Around on uh, the Greatest Hits, that Funkin' Around record is beautiful. Oh. No, in due time. In due time. Yeah, man. Their soundtrack shit is flawless, man. I think Phobia might have been one of the weaker ones that they've ever done. That was a higher learning. That probably is the weakest one. It's at least notable. At least during that time period. Um, but with all that being said, I wasn't super impressed with uh, Artist Storytelling 4, and it was a dope song. But it's similar to what this is. It's like, it's a dope song, but we talking about Clips catalog here. Right, uh, right. AKs and Curtain says, have y'all covered Elzai's album? Yeah, we talked about Elzai. I think it was like, what, last, it might have been last Friday or Wednesday. But you can go on YouTube and find that. Um, you should be able to find that under our page. Um, this is what I want to talk about the album all together. I think, uh, and I got the track list up for the people here. I want to go yeah. right down the line because... You know, it's kind of short. 
<laughs> I thought yeah. Lost and Found Freestyle from uh, 2019. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but it was dope. Because I've always liked that Slim Thug uh, track. The, uh, what was that? Um, damn, what's the name of that song? The song with him, uh, T.I. and Bun B. I know what song you're talking yeah. about, but it really is missing yeah, me. Yeah, right. for the people in the chat, tell us what, uh, what song it is. We forgot. Um, but yeah. I think, you know what I thought about this album? I thought ASAP was impressive. And I'm always big on ASAP and his consistency and how he sounds over very fresh and new stuff. I feel like he was the most impressive part of this project. I feel like they were really trying to push Tyler on us, but it's something about Tyler as an MC MC that's like, I think he's one of those guys that we can get one verse from. But I don't think he's a guy that can carry that whole torch of being what what they call him the best rapper alive for twenty twenty uh, one or whatever. Like he's not that, but he can give you a dope little verse here and there on a song with other people. I think that ASAP is the one that can carry things, and I think he was the most pre- impressive person. Yes, Fliff Spark says Three Kings. Yes, that was the name of the song. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, um, forgive the mind, not the heart. We know these records, but yeah, when you're on live and you got so much to cover, you kinda of forget those things. But yeah, Three Kings was hard. Um so but yeah, Mike, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm gonna disagree with you slightly. Mm-hmm. And I would I and, and those were my sentiments listening to this album. That like ASAP was like the star of it just for what he did on those first couple of tracks on the Lost and Found Freestyle and then on the Aria. Mm-hmm. Cause he's impressive and consistent, like you said. Like everything that you said about, about ASAP, I echo those sentiments. Oh, but look, um, let me be clear though. Hear me clearly is the best song on the album. Yeah, I'm, I might quibble with you about that too, Mike. Because I'm gonna tell you what that "Come On, Let's Go." You like the that? Time, man, I I did, and you know I don't like the happy shit. But that was pretty dope. And you want to know it was dope? It was easy and effortless. And it was relatable, Mike. Tell me you can't relate. Yeah, no. Oh, Godfather in here says <laughs> Rosenberg. Ends, Mike. Tell me that's not going on in your house, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Godfather says Rosenberg only know according to hip hop was coming on today, so he has something to say. Oh, hold on. we're we're out of the loop on that. At least I am. I've been running around all day. What what did Rosenberg have to say? Yeah, because we got a little bit of time and, today. And and since we're talking about <laughs> hear me clearly. I'll also tell you the song before, uh, Paper Plates. I, told I like them, I Paper Plates. Paper I like plates. Paper Plates. I, I was thinking, I was debating between the two. And I like Ferg over that Neptune shit like it's a vibe. I like what they're doing right there. You want to know what it is? Because when we talked about this, I think when we rated Ferg's last album, about how like Ferg literally goes and swings for the fences every time. This Neptune's pairing was perfect for what he likes to do, and they need to do more work together. I, I think I think they can do more of this together, and this needs to happen more often. Because you, you know me, I'm a Neptune guy, and I feel like these songs are more Pharrell produced, but there, there were a lot of Pharrell produced songs, or sounded like they were Pharrell produced songs, that kind of went flat on this one, and that one wasn't one of them. Right, but don't you, don't, how about, don't, don't you feel like Third Zone puts Pharrell into a certain type of energy that makes him show out a little oh, bit definitely. more. Than, yeah. I think the Neptunes are those type of producers where it's like the energy, they build off of the energy of the artist. Right. And I think yeah. that's what's so dope about them. Whereas I feel like Timbaland does that with certain artists, but there are certain artists that he'll just dial it in and just give you a beat that he's been working on or whatever. Oh, that man, somebody said uh, Denzel Curry dropped a great album. You know what? We might have to get to Denzel on Wednesday uh, because I was about to listen to that. I just didn't have enough time today to really give it the listen I wanted to give it because Denzel's last effort, that was an album that I was like, yo, I like this, but maybe I should talk to somebody else about this. Like, I wanted to be sure. It was, it was just so different. Yeah. Um, confirmation and wrong But anyway, yeah, he's, I guess they're talking about uh, Jay Z dropping an album. Yeah, whatever. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I saw, I saw. Next. 
Okay, yeah, you know what? While we're talking about Jay Z and we're gonna get back to this album real quick, I want people to clearly understand, man. Like, I saw a lot of folks in the comment in that uh, well or well conversation saying that they always thought it was W E L L. And my thing is, you know, when you talk about context and when you talk about, like, let's just say you go take the SATs, those context clues leading up to the line. Let it be known that it's actually W H A L E, or at least it should be. Can you say, I sell ice in the winter, I sell fire in hell, I am a hustler, baby, I sell water to a well. You're basically saying in each stanza, you're saying that I'm gonna sell you some things that you don't need. A, a well, well doesn't need the water. Go ahead. No, all of those things. But he's speaking to having a tangible product to give to somebody who does not need the product, yeah. which therein buys what makes him a great hustler. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he's still doing it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even with well, us talking about this line. Right. I'm about to say, we just got God. Yeah. He got <laughs> us. You know what I mean? Even, even with his uh, text message to Just Ways. It was like, this is ho. Colin. I'm going to hey, start sending he, text he, messages like that. Yo. He has a, uh, he's as is tactful and, uh, you know, you know, agile as they come, you know, in, in, in this sphere. Yeah. No, 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 definitely. And he knows how to work the system. Um, and he knows how to work people. And like he said, man, first he had the, what did he say? First I had an ear, now I had a heart. Nobody's going to listen to anything you got to say otherwise because they've bought into the great MC of Jay. But listen, man, it's W-H-A-L-E. And it really shouldn't even be that big of a conversation. And I don't know if, uh, like I said, an album's coming, but I'm at the point now where it's like, you know, believe it when I hear it. Uh, all right, so someone said, and this is the whole discussion. They're saying a well needs water to survive. It's well. Okay, so when he's saying, okay, so, so you're, you, you got okay. you got a well that's how much water are you gonna sell to this well? This well that's been upshored. I don't believe we're doing like you know. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. We, I guess we have to. Um, so, so the prepositional phrase before though is "I'm a hustler, baby." Okay, uh -huh. so he is emphasizing that part of his hustle is his ability to sell a product to somebody or to something that inherently really doesn't need the product, thereby identifying his greatness in legend as a hustler. Because if you're selling water to a well that, that has been upshored, that's not much of a salesperson because <laughs> you don't... <laughs> You can't do it with an inanimate object, Mike. Just well, that to too, obviously. But I'm just saying, <laughs> let's just take this whole argument, right? That they're saying whales need water to live. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that he'll sell you things you don't need. Right. You know. That's the part. And like I said, I could see if he just said it off jump. But he led up. I sell ice in the winter. You don't. Need, oh, the winter doesn't need ice. I sell fire in hell. Hell doesn't need fire. I am a hustler, baby. I'll sell water to a well. That well has the water if it's alive. So, so I mean, the part of the hustle is the fact that we're even having this conversation. But I'm just saying, you no, know, where do whales live? <laughs> they live in water. So when you're talking about well, whales need water to survive. Well, no shit, they live in water. That's what he's saying. He's saying he will sell them something that they already exist in. That's the level to which he's a hustler, and how great he is at it. He's basically sell, saying that I'll sell you air. Right. Exactly. Like Kanye's air went for sale. Exactly. Exactly. The other part doesn't make sense. Again, if you were taking the SATs and y'all went out here and answered that one as W-E-L-L, -L, you would have gotten that wrong. <laughs> it's bottom line. But anyway, back to this. We'll just, we'll just go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. I did like for paper planes. I, you know, I skipped over the teriyaki boy. I really didn't like the kid cutty thing. 
I thought that the uh, Pharrell and Gunner went flat a little bit, man. I thought it was flat too. I wasn't impressed by. It. Yeah, and I really wasn't impressed by um, the little Uzi one either. It was cool. It was some mid. Yeah, it, it was, was cool. Some I think we can move on. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's hard to really rate these albums, you know what I'm saying? These are collaborations and all of that. I think it's more interesting now, man, when when you can actually look at a individual artist's body of work. That's why I was so disappointed that we weren't, I mean, nothing against this project. But I was disappointed that we weren't getting Pusha T's album this week because it's just so much more interesting to talk about individual acts as opposed to compilations. Well, that's what I actually wanted to ask you, Mike, because this is what my question kind of was, too. Okay, so which one do you like more, Hear Me Clearly or Diet Coke? Diet Coke. Right. So I kind of like hearing this on this project because it makes me think it's not going to make his album. Exactly. And I didn't think it was Daytona level. I thought Diet I felt the Coke same was way. Daytona level. So that actually hearing this on this project made me feel more excited about his album because I'm like, oh, he knows this isn't Daytona level over here. And you know or what? It's and it's crazy that even if it's not Daytona level, it's still the best song on this album. Uh, yeah. I, as far as like, you don't think it's the best rap performance on this album? It's the best rap performance on here. It's just like Paper yeah. Plane. Paper Plane has that feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and that Tyler record at the end has, has a feel too. Yeah, you know, it's just, you know, again, I listened to the Tyler record. I think it's dope, but it's clear that they're really trying to push uh, Tyler as being the next MC. I I wouldn't be surprised if his next album is all rap, where this one was half rap and half him doing what he normally does. You know what I mean? I think he's probably going to do more rap than he normally has on the next effort. I think he's been inspired to rap. And now encouraged and motivated to rap, and on top of that, received accolades for it. So I agree. 